Peace and greetings to our viewers at home. We'd like to thank the Lord for his protection, for providing us with shelter, for his faithfulness. We are carrying on with our great controversy series. We are in chapter 13 today, the Netherlands and Scandinavia. With me here today is Brother Francois, Brother Mioli, Brother Madonzella, Brother Mutle. I'm Sister Nube, your host. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Brother Francois will pray for us. Let us pray. Our God in heaven, Father, I want to thank you so much for yet another opportunity given to us to be able to open your word. We pray, dear Father, Lord, that you send the Holy Spirit to be able to open our minds as well. As yes, we Lord. study your word, please, O oh Savior, engrave it in our hearts and give us confidence which is lied only on your word. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. We will notice that in our previous chapters, we've been dealing with reformation. Oh, yes. Now, this, on this particular chapter, we're in Netherlands and Scandinavia. The Bishop of Rome yes, no. had already been impeached in these countries in yes. the earlier decades before mm. Martin Luther arrived. Yep. Now, the people who, who impeached him were so clear of the reasons why they had done that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They said, we have this thing against you, mm. that you have set yourself in the temple of the Lord mm. as if you were God yourself. Oh, yeah. And instead of becoming a servant amongst God's children, mm -hmm. you have set up yourself as if you were the Lord of Lords. Oh, yes. mm. This contrast between Christ and Antichrist, what is being black and white? I mean, mm. you cannot match the two. Mm. You know, the book of Second Thessalonians speaks about the man of sin as well. He sits in the temple as God. Yeah. You know, so this has been something that can be substantiated by the Bible itself, as well as, 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 well as history, as we are now looking at this, uh, this particular chapter. Now, as you look at that, uh, what I come, when I was reading this chapter, what I, I saw from the beginning is the people who are connected with the system itself, they are not fully aware of the condition of the system until when God opened their eyes. Mm -hmm. And that has gone on with Martin Luther. He only knew the evil which was happening in Rome until when God opened his eyes. Yep. And that goes with many others. And you and I were not exempted, or many others outside who probably can be physically connected to certain systems. They were never going to be able to see the evil that is happening within the system until when God opened their eyes. Mm. So this, we are, we are introduced to, do, to two bishops. We actually went and pay a visit uh, you know, in Rome, in Holy See, mm. and only to discover that no, the condition even, is even worse. They mm -hmm. knew what they were standing against, mm -hmm. but God, in a very special way, was able to open their eyes and they were able to see exactly what Rome was all about. And, you know, I think what's also profound about uh, this chapter is the fact that people need to be studious mm -hmm. when it comes to the Bible. They need to yes. be careful students of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Because to be in a religious system without being studious yourself, you cannot pick up or detect the error exactly. in the system. True. But if, if you are a follower of Jesus and you base your religion on the scripture, mm -hmm. you are able to detect the inconsistencies mm -hmm. of wherever the religious system you are worshipping under may be. Mm -hmm. And this really shows the importance of someone who bases their religion on the Bible, a Bible student, a Bible-based Christian. Oh, yes. I think that's at the center of this chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, there's something that that I found very interesting on this chapter is the issue of the Vodos. Mm. Oh. There were three aspects that um, I found very interesting yes, because sir. it helped the people to change from the Roman system mm -hmm. to start to be more into the Bible, yes, their sir. character. Because now they were depicting the character of Christ. Oh, yes. And secondly, the knowledge of the gospel. Mm. Yes, and, thirdly, and thirdly, they translated the, the, the Bible, mm -hmm. the Waldensian Bible, yeah. to 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 the, the Dutch language. language. The mm. Now yes. that is something that is very very important for all of us because mm. right now, as I was reading, I came across the book on Ezekiel chapter three verse one. Mm. I'll just paraphrase it a bit. It says, mm. "Mortal men, mm. eat this scroll that I give you. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. Fill your stomach with it." Mm. And I ate it, and it tasted sweet as honey. Oh, yeah. oh, eat beautiful. it all. Yeah. That's the motto. Mm. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Yes, we continue with the book, getting more understanding. Now, the Netherlands and the Scandinavia, mm -hmm. the word of God was moving. Remember, Luther was in charge as he was giving the people the word of God, and mm -hmm. they were to learn a lot from that. And mm -hmm. in Netherlands, as we read, the teachings of Luda found a congenial soil in the Netherlands. Oh, yes. yeah. And earnest and faithful men arose to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. yeah. As the brothers said, the word of God 
all the people will, will start to, to have a light mm. yeah. because mm -hmm. of the word of God. They will see now that we, we, the, the word of God does not say someone must be worshipped. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The word of God said someone must not be, uh, no one must exalt someone mm -hmm. because of the word of God. It yeah. must stand as being the word of God and Christ must be the center of everything. So this, this was a, a starting of a revolution. Yes. Things were starting to happen now. People were starting to learn and many changes, mm -hmm. as we will we'll understand in Europe, things were starting to happen in other places. And here, as we are reading this chapter, but the Netherlands and then Scandinavia, a number of things that are, are, are mentioned. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want us to go back a little bit and yes, try right. and elaborate on a few things that I touched on the introduction. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. first accusation, mm -hmm. you set yourself up in the temple of God, mm -hmm. instead of pastoring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second one, yeah. hey. you have become a wolf to mm -hmm. the sheep. Mm -hmm. uh, you make us believe you are a bishop, mm -hmm. yet you are a tyrant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey. And then the fourth one, you bring the commandments of God to contempt. Mm -hmm. Here is somebody who is supposed to be leading the church. Mm -hmm. And these are the accusations that are being said against the individual. Mm -hmm. Now let's bring this to our current mm -hmm. churches. Mm -hmm. And we see the very same pattern that was happening then mm -hmm. and happening now. Mm -hmm. Do we see that the church members are in the same danger mm -hmm. yep. as the then church members oh, and the now church members? The part that actually that we, that is being described is, mm -hmm. is the papacy. Mm -hmm. And most of the churches were born, as we've been seeing, the Protestant, you know, these are individuals who are disconnecting from the errors. Mm -hmm. And the areas that I've been studying in as far as the Reformation is concerned, these areas were under, first under the dominion of the papacy. Mm -hmm. Now they were now escaping. Now by escaping, many of them never left all that was Rom uh, Romish or mm -hmm. all that was actually, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, connected with the papacy. Mm -hmm. Along with the Reformation, we also, they were carrying along some of the teachings were not correct. Mm -hmm. Now, when we get to where we are right now, as we are asking, are these things that are happening, you know, were happening then, in as far as the papacy is concerned, you know, the, the, the claim, you know, sitting mm -hmm. as God and so on, is it happening today? The answer is, is yes, because mm. most of the churches yeah. who are actually existing today, the majority of them are still having connection with the papacy. Mm -hmm. And since they never fully came out of the apostasy, mm. they're still actually reflecting the image of the mother church. You know, I came an article which actually was put out by the Vatican. Mm -hmm. And what the Vatican was doing was, was actually trying to provoke the Protestant. Mm -hmm. Remember, mm -hmm. along with, I think it was in 2014, if not 15, where, where this Anglican man came and says that the Protestant movement Movement is no longer existing. Mm. You know, it's dead. But the Pope went on to write an article where he says that we are calling our daughters back. Yo. And the mm. daughters that are, uh, the Pope, I mean, the purpose he was actually talking about, he was talking about the Protestant, the apostate pro mm. Protestant, mm. who are claiming to be de independent from Rome, but yet they're still connected to Rome. Mm -hmm. So the same mindset of the papacy of wanting to sit as a queen and claiming to be God, it's happening also in the daughters as well. Mm. Pastors are not pastors in the churches, but because they, they themselves are claiming to be founders of the churches. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a founder of something, then everyone else must come and give you allegiance of and course. homage. Of course. So it's happening even within our churches today. Hmm. And I think also this principle, I mean, there's the, there's the last charge that you mentioned, the one that says you bring the commandments of God into contempt. Mm -hmm. Just to be practical, mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20 says here, that to the law and to the testimony, mm -hmm. if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Mm -hmm. Now we need to serve and see that wherever our religion may be or wherever our, our faith community is, do we uphold the testimony of the gospel? Mm -hmm. And do we also uphold the law? Or do we rather uphold the name of Jesus at the expense of the law mm -hmm. because of grace? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what? This we must know, we must exercise it the Holy Spirit, how important it is. People must be driven by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Just listen to this statement. He says, Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the builder of all churches Amen. as far as the earth extends. Mm. He says, the city of our God, of which we are the citizens, reaches to all the regions, the regions of the heavens, and it is greater than the city by the holy prophets named Babylon, which pretends to be divine, mm. wins herself to heaven and brags that her wisdom is immortal and finally, though, without reason, that she never did err uh, nor ever can. Mm. 
Mm. This is a quote from this book written by this gentleman, Gerard Brands. I, 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 just, I was just touched by this uh, title. It says, History of the Reformation in and about the Low Countries, mm. which means the Holy Spirit was everywhere. Mm. Yeah, and everyone must must understand that there was no small country that uh, 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 did not matter. Yeah, yes, every country the Holy Spirit when is there, it will it will it will expose the papacy. Mm. Yeah, he would expose everything. Will say no. We understand the word of God, mm. so don't come with uh, uh, your exhortation. Mm. Mm. So this is what the, uh, this uh, uh, this gentleman who has wrote this. He was just you know putting us to understand more yeah. of of uh, the, these lower countries. Yeah, yeah. As as she had asked that uh, when we look at the situation, let's compare it with our current situation in churches. Mm. Yeah. You see. I get, um, I'm concerned about many things at this day and age mm -hmm. where we, we profess to be the son of the sons of Jesus, oh, yes. but we don't have that relationship with him. Mm. Yes, sir. By, by us not reading the way, mm. not being founded on the way as uh, much as we should, yeah. we are obviously going to be delusioned. So, but mm. the main thing is this, God has made a way out for all of us mm. and that's nothing else but his way. Yes. And the Holy Spirit is there to guide and teach us. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Now, let us also look at a very important mm -hmm. aspect here. Yes, ma'am. When, when the Bible is being translated, yeah. mm. the request is, let's use the Bible from the wildernesses. Mm -hmm. mm. It's unadulterated. Yeah. Mm. It has no deceit in it. Mm -hmm. It is pure. Mm -hmm. It has no fables. It is true, mm. straight from mm. the mouth mm. of God. Mm. Let's look at the importance of passing the button to the next person and yes. preserving mm. the word of God in its purity. Mm. Because if you were to look at some Bible translations today, yeah. you would wonder, yeah. is, it, is it still the true and direct and pure word of the Lord? It's Amen. Not. Amen. Mm. It's not. I, look, looking just the, you know, what do you see how this, all these translations that we have outside of versions. And you begin to compare one, you know, from the next. Okay, mm. we've got a paraphrase ones. Of course, those ones are 100% off. Because paraphrase, it's all about me reading a verse and mm. then try to reflect whatever that I've written and whatever I've read and try to put in my own words. Mm -hmm. That's no longer God's words. Yes. Of course. No longer. It has been tempered. Mm -hmm. So if your expressions are not correct, you won't be able to, to pass on the, the message that God wanted to pass mm -hmm. on. Of course. So we've got that one. We've got the new translation that are coming up. And each one of them has its own, you know, problems that are technical mm -hmm. problems. And as far as keeping consistent, I mean, the consistency in the, in the, in the message that are God wanted to pass it on. But when you come to the Bible and you look at the source of the manuscripts themselves, yes, sir. I will advocate for King James Version because mm -hmm. it has been mm -hmm. proven even in the past history mm -hmm. to say this was the Bible of the Reformation. This is what they, they stood upon. Mm -hmm. And the paper knows. That's why he has been, mm -hmm. you know, sponsoring a lot of guys who are actually translating the so-called so new translations mm -hmm. or new versions of the Bible to try and conf confuse the individuals. You know, I was just, I was just doing a bi simple Bible study with the Jehovah Witness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you go to their own particular Bible, which they have, the yeah. New World Translation, yeah. John chapter 1, verse 1, it speaks very well. In the beginning, mm. there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the, <laughs> the Word, word was, was God. God. Yeah. Ah. But in their translation, it says, in oh the my. beginning, there was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Ah. So a small oh. tree. <laughs> Yeah, Can you see? Something else. Already something is happening. <laughs> there. Yeah. Go to First John chapter five. Ooh. When he speaks about there are three that are bear, bear witnesses: the Father, mm. the Word, and the in their in their translation that that is not there. Mm. So mm. we will have to go back and go and look at which translation to be used because mm. the devil. He will make all these Bible translations hmm. outside available, but yeah. will that going to benefit? Hmm. Hmm. It won't. If hmm. we have to preserve the true, I mean, the true uh, word of God, we'll have to go back and go and look at what the Reformation or the reformatory movement was using so that we can also use in this time. Hmm. Therefore, it will be, I don't want to say fair, I want to say just. All right. For me to say, okay. we should go back to the old ways of mm. the Waltenses mm. mm. and try and memorize Mm -hmm. oh. most portions of the Bible oh, yes. that oh, are yes. still in their purity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not only us be able to help our children mm -hmm. to memorize, because if you realize at the time of which the Bible is being translated, mm -hmm. the older folks had passed away. Yeah. It's the young guys yeah. who had been taught to memorize. Yeah. 
Yeah. Who are now doing the the, the translation? Mm -hmm. So maybe we should we should be in a position oh, yes. to give our children the very same heritage yeah. that the wild dance is called yeah. heritage yeah. for their children. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, viewers. We shall take a short break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Amen. Welcome once again. Uh, before the break, we were discussing about the wild dances. Let's look at yet another reformer, Martin Luther. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther goes into the uh, reformation, bold, knowing divinities with him. Mm -hmm. It does some trans uh, translation of the New Testament. Now, a lot of people benefited from that translation of the New Testament because for the first time, some of them had an opportunity of holding a Bible in their hands. Yeah. Amongst the other people who benefited from reading from Martin Luther's translation yeah. was a man called Menno Simons. Now, Menno Simons was an educated Roman Catholic, and he was also a priest. Mm. But what was interesting, the author here says he was wholly ignorant of the Bible as a priest, mm. as a Catholic priest. Mm. But he was ignorant Very of the Bible. Sad. Mm. Makes mm. me wonder how many we have on our belt today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are just as ignorant. We are just as ignorant, yeah. but are clergy. Mm. Yeah. But are ignorant mm. when it comes to the Bible. Mm. Makes me wonder about mm. that, mm. Menno Simon. He was wholly ignorant of the Bible and he would not read it for the fear of being beguiled into heresy. Mm. <laughs> now, this is something that we pick up with the papal system. Yeah. <laughs> they persecuted anyone who read the Bible in depth mm -hmm. because of then they knew that that would cause what they called heresy. Mm -hmm. which is something that was in contrary with their dogmas mm -hmm. that they pushed. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the things that may have also pushed him to his ignorance was the fact that he feared that a deep study of the scriptures would call the charge of heresy. Mm -hmm. But today we don't have that. Mm -hmm. What's your excuse, of minister of the gospel, mm -hmm. if you are ignorant of the scriptures? Mm -hmm. The same spirit that is being manifested here, I mean, he didn't just pick, pick up the spirit out of the blue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This guy was also taught that if you read this book on your own, you will end up being a heretic, hmm. right? So that, that's how they were labeling everyone who was actually acquainted with the Bible. Hmm. Now, this spirit was also manifested in the Jewish nation hmm. before Christ was or came into this world. Yes, sir. What happened was the portion of Daniel chapter 9 that has to do with, the, you know, the 70 weeks. Yes, sir. The rabbi actually Ooh. declared that there was a curse. A miracle yes, curse was in there. <laughs> Why? Because that was the only scripture that was speaking about the time in which Christ is going to be born. So trying to block everyone else to be able to know when Christ is going to be born and how they're going to identify him, they actually declare a curse upon that. <laughs> so all, all the common men were not allowed to go and read. If, if you go and read that, uh, that portion of scripture, they will tell you that you're going to be, you're going to be persecuted. So <laughs> it's the same spirit. So the devil does not change wow. his way of doing things. <laughs> same so mode of operation. Darkness ah. is his way of dealing with us. So this man, but we are told that when a doubt concerning the doctrine of substantiation, yes, this was this, this idea of whenever the priest lift up that small bread yeah. mm -hmm. and Turn then the he declare it and then that bread will be will, should be changed from being just a mere bread to, to the a living body of Christ. Christ. Oh my yes. God. Mm -hmm. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. <laughs> this actually stuck his mind and said, no man, what's going on? And this was actually one of the steps that is going to lead him to a change in point to his life. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's something quite interesting that uh, this man, Meno Simons, did. He didn't just sit on that. Yeah. He mm -hmm. took an effort to try to find out. Eventually, he ended up reading the word mm. and yeah. also the writings of Luther as well. Mm. Because right now, he, it says here, I'll quote, it says, this led him to study the Bible mm. in regard to the infant baptism. He could find no evidence mm. in the scriptures, mm -hmm. but he saw that repentance and mm. faith are everywhere required as conditions for receiving baptism. And you know, good sir, I think just sorry to interject yeah. on this one, but when we, when we come with the book, it says the guy was skeptical of his views. In the he beginning. thought that they were from Satan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So he would pray, God, please help me, yeah. protect me from heresy. Yes. How do but I the Holy this? Spirit never gave him peace. Amen. Of course. Suddenly he gave in into the current of the Holy Spirit Amen. and inquired from the scriptures. Amen. Never ever silenced the voice of the Holy Ghost. Amen. When he 
causes you to see certain gaps and inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. It's not the devil at times. Mm. It's the spirit of God. But it takes a very sensitive kind of ear to mm. hear the promptings of the spirit mm. when it comes to Bible study and doctrinal issues. Mm. Mm. This man of Simons, mm -hmm. as we have read about other uh, mm. people of God, He's, one, he's the one as well who, who was enlightened oh, as he yeah. was reading the word of God. Mm -hmm. For instance, what you have said about what he discovered about the infant baptism, mm -hmm. it's not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So he wants to search and know more about the things of God, about what the scripture is saying. Mm -hmm. Because as we read, he says here, to read the Bible, to hear or preach it, or even to speak concerning it was to incur the penalty of death mm. by the stake. Mm. And it says, to pray to God in secret, mm. to refrain from bound to an image or to sing mm. a psalm was also punishable with death. Mm. Mm. So all those things were there mm. and they were watching. Yep. Mm. Why, am I, why, why am I supposed to read the Bible? Mm. You know, they, they were, as my brother said, they were so skeptical about other mm. things. They were not so sure about... Why, why the Bible? And, and it was the truth. The truth was in the Bible. So men of Simons as well, but as we have read, he was educated, but you know he was not. Mm. <laughs> he was not mm. educated. Mm. Because there are people even today who are called pastors and, and men of God and all mm. that. They think, and the world thinks, these people, they know the word of God, mm. and mm. they know it. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me go back a little bit to okay. what Brother Karabo said. Yeah. Sure. That the men this became skeptical <laughs> after finding the truth. Yeah. For goodness sake, I wouldn't blame the man. Mm. He has grown up in the system. Yes. Mm. It is almost engraved in his brain mm. that the truth is this. Mm. So when he gets to these astounding truths, mm. he's perplexed. Mm. <laughs> Why should I be the one getting this? Where is it coming from? Mm. And he even thinks it's the devil. <laughs> so we thank God for the Holy Spirit. Yes. That that knocks on the doors of our hearts and continue to enlighten us mm -hmm. until we have found the truth 100%. Now, mm. this man or man, <laughs> after finding the truth, yeah. mm. withdraws from Rome oh, yes. mm. and continues to read. Mm -hmm. Now, after reading, he starts teaching mm. the Bible truths. Mm. Yes, sir. He goes to a yes, particular place, Germany and ne Netherlands, where fanatics had risen again. Mm. Mm. A lot of people had been deceived. You see, we've been reading about Germany over and over again. Yeah. It looks like it's under constant attack. Mm. And God keeps sending people to go back to Germany. Mm. Not only that, he says when these fanatics arrived, a lot of people were deceived. Yeah. Except <laughs> for a group of people mm. who were descendants yeah. of the Waldenses. Oh, yeah. oh. That hit me below the belt. <laughs> the Waldenses again. Yeah. We yes, had sir. kept the purity of the truth. No, yes. That's, those are the descendants who are not corruptible. Mm. Yeah. The fanatics come and go, mm. but the Waldenses remain true to the Lord. Amen. Meaning, their forefathers, as they were saying, it's inheritance to their children. Oh, yes. They had done a good job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And also another thing that is quite interesting is this. As uh, Brother Franz had said earlier on, mm. that we've got the Church of God and the anti-Church of God. Oh, yes. Right. Now, the issue is here. It says here, he saw that repentance mm -hmm. and faith. You see, the devil, there's nothing that the devil hates more than repentance. Of course. It is true. And at this day it and is age, true. there's no way that you could be studying the scriptures and not be in line with repentance, the value, the importance, what it symbolizes to us today. Because yeah. repentance is solely connected with Christ no, and in Christ alone. Mm. Amen. No, we don't have any person in between mm. God and us. Mm. It's Christ alone, no. Actually, not a human being. The Christ. same author of this book, uh -huh. authored another book called Steps to Christ. Uh -huh. And in Steps to Christ, she says, the closer you come to Jesus oh, yeah. is the more you the see your sinfulness mm -hmm. and the more you need him. Mm -hmm. But the you realizing your sinfulness mm -hmm. is repentance because mm -hmm. it of leads course. to repentance. Yeah. Very true. I was also struck with the, the quality of life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, Brother Francois. What he actually embraced was actually the present truth of the day. Right? Yes. So yes, the sir. present truth of the day, what it does, mm. it, it recreates in man a new man. Hmm. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, I just want to read for you how, how the writer, to, I mean, Great Controversy 239, paragraph 2, mm -hmm. describes his life mm -hmm. when he embraced the truth. It mm -hmm. says, naturally eloquent, so he was a very gifted man, mm -hmm. though, passing, though passing a limit, uh, limited education, mm -hmm. he was a man of unwavering integrity, of, mm -hmm. of humble spirit and gentle uh, manners, and of, of sincere 
and earnest piety, mm -hmm. exemplifying, exemplifying in his own life the precepts which he taught, mm -hmm. and he condemned. Yep. I mean, he, com he commanded the mm -hmm. confidence of of the people. So that's what the truth does. Mm -hmm. God cannot just come and give you a wealth of truth to mm -hmm. leave you in your sins. Mm -hmm. Once, if you accept the truth, mm -hmm. not just in the in the head, yes. because th this is this is what we call when the truth only hit the head, it, it engrosses the mind, it mm -hmm. comes out. Mm -hmm. But when it reaches the heart, it breaks the heart and creates in man a new man altogether. Amen. So he has become such an instrument which we are, we are going to see. Mm -hmm. is going to become so active in the work of saving souls for Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go down, Ellen Jewett also speaks about whenever truth is being professed, what really God expects of us. So this is Amazing Grace, page 263, paragraph 2. She says, men may profess faith in the truth, mm -hmm. but if it does not make them sincere, yeah. mm -hmm. kind, patient, mm. forbearing, mm. heavenly minded, hey, it is possessor. a curse to mm. its possessor. Lord. And through their influence, it is a curse to the world. Oh, God has oh. never set up us in such oh. a world to become a curse. Oh. He oh. wants us to, be, to become a blessing just as is to Abraham. Oh. You and you as Abraham and your descendants will become a, a blessing, blessing to, to all the, the nations around the world. Yeah. So God has given us truth <laughs> so that we can exemplify this truth to become a blessing to the rest of the world. So this man mm. lived it out his truth mm. and he became also a blessing to others. Powerful. Looking, looking to the repentance that mm. we are talking about. Mm -hmm. mm. All people of God must be bold to stand whatever the situation that they will face. Mm -hmm. yeah? Now, sharing with you this word from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you mm -hmm. except such as is common to man. Yeah. Yeah? Now, God will deal with everyone, yes. anytime, anywhere, yeah. with his word. Because my brother said, people who, who will stand to the word of God, God will speak to them, God will show them the way. Oh, because yeah. it says, but God is faithful, yes, yeah. who will not allow you to be tempted beyond, beyond what That's we are true. able. Oh, yeah. yes. So all these people, God will, will strengthen them. Mm. God will make sure that everything that he gives you, 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 you he, because the, the word of God says, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape mm. Yeah. Mm. that you may be able to bear it. Yeah. Mm. So God is in charge. The plan of salvation, he will never stop it to any individual yeah. who will mm. come to God faithfully, who will know that God will rescue anyone, anytime, anywhere. Oh, yes. As he thought uh, in, in Netherlands, uh, in, in Scandinavian countries, and all over the world as we speak. Mm. Mm. Amen. Yeah, Amen. and not only then, even now, today God has made a way out for us today. Mm. Mm. As much as we might have the coronas and all this, yeah. but God, yeah. those that read the word of God and have so. that personal relationship with mm. Christ. Yeah. God has made a way out for us as well. Just before we go to for break, I want us to look at another important aspect about men. Okay. Mm -hmm. This man, unlike other reformers, he drags his family alone. Mm. Mm. He does not go alone. Mm. We have seen other reformers going alone. Mm. I'm thinking they were understanding mm. the situation is hectic, no, yeah. it's dangerous, yeah. they want their wives and children to be protected. Mm. Here is a man oh. who goes out with his wife and his children his yeah. children share in the sorrow. Oh, yes. yeah. His wife shares in the sorrow. Oh, yeah. As the children are growing up, they understand in depth mm. oh. what it means mm. to yeah. share in the sorrows of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Our experience cannot just be isolated from our families. Mm -hmm. You know, we are, if you're a man, you're the head of the family. Mm -hmm. Now, you, we don't know what the future holds. You can mm -hmm. die today, but will your fam family still continue with the cause mm -hmm. which you have actually introduced them to? So he understood that if I can take my family along, it is much easier for them to experiment and experience mm -hmm. what it means to bear the cross of Christ. Amen. So it's very key that we need to bring our families along so that if one of us as members within the family drops off, other ones can still continue with the same fire, which yeah. will actually lead yeah. from the mm -hmm. beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. if we are to leave our families behind, mm. then if, if we are gone, they will say the religion belongs to our father. And hey, of course. Hey. There's no reason why we should continue. Hey. Of course. Hey. So it's very key that we need to learn those particular lessons. Yeah. Your families must know 
Mm. Why are you? What, what are you signing in? Mm. Let them be part of the signature as well. Hey. Then, as you are gone, they will continue with the gospel. That means if you don't involve your family, mm -hmm. and anything happens to you, the message is extinct. Oh, of yeah. Your family continues, but the message is assassinated. Mm. Oh. Yeah. To keep it alive, you must take them with. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So, as families, we go to heaven together. Oh, home, yes, yes. homebound <laughs> as families. Yes. After all, what will be heaven when another family member is hey. missing? Yes. We want to enjoy it hey. as families hey. entirely, hey. wholly. Hey. Yes. And, and, and that's exactly what Christ yeah. wants to happen because every parent mm. should answer for their children, that's the true. absence of their children. That's true. Chances are if your children are not there and hey. they are under age hey. children, mm. that cannot take decisions mm. for themselves. They are not going either. Hey. Because God gave you an, op an empty disk you filled it. Oh, yeah. If the information in there is wrong, yeah. we are not going either. Yeah. So yeah. let us make sure yeah. we are doing this as families <laughs> and we are all homebound together. Oh, yeah. We will take a short break, oh. our viewers. Please don't go away. Stay right here with us. Amen. 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 <laughs> Welcome once again. When we are going for break, we are discussing about families. Mm. Going together as families, homebound together as families. I want us to elaborate a little bit. There's an extract that I want to, 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 to quote mm. from Great Controversy. Look, it says here, to read the Bible, to hear it, or to preach it, or even to speak concerning it, mm. it, would, it, it was to incur the penalty of death by the stake, to pray to God in secret, and to refrain from bowing to an image or sing a psalms was also punishable with death. Mm. Even those who should abjure their errors were condemned if men to die by the sword, if women were buried alive. Mm. Mm. But here is the interesting part. Thousands. It says, thousands perished under the reign of Charles and Philip II. At, the, at one time, the whole family, as we're talking about the, the value and the importance of oh, yeah. oneness in the family, mm -hmm. we're going to see w w how did it play out in terms of families. It says here, at, that, at one time, a whole family was brought before the inquisitors and charged with remaining way from the mess and worshipping at home. On his examination mm. as to their practice in secret, the youngest son in the family answered, <laughs> we fall on our knees and we pray that God mm. enlighten our minds yeah. and pardons our sins. Yeah. We pray for our sovereign, mm. that his reign may be Beneath. prosperous and his mm. life happy. Mm. And we pray for the magistrates <laughs> that God may preserve them. Mm. Now, mm. on that point, do you see the, 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 the value of inculcating in the children yeah. mm. the, 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 the importance mm -hmm. yes. of oneness and the, to be in the way of oh, yes. God? Mm. Because mm. this child was mm. talking the truth. Mm. Yeah. That's exactly what they were doing in it all. Mm. And there was absolutely nothing wrong in it. Mm. And yeah. young as he is, he was bold enough to stand for the truth. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. And yeah. after yeah. the young boy had spoken, mm. <laughs> the magistrates were touched. Mm. So the writer says, because the child indicates, we even pay, pray for magistrates. Mm. <laughs> now let's look at another point. Mm. Charles V. Oh, yes. had banned reformation. Oh, yes. And he had said, he had sent out a decree to say, reformers and their followers mm. and everybody who worshipped Christ yeah. should be banned, they should be persecuted, they should be tortured. Mm -hmm. Now, the princes stood oh. up against him mm -hmm. as a peer, and yeah. they called him a tyrant. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Now, I want us to look at two group of influential men. Mm -hmm. Charles V is very influential. The princes are very influential. Mm -hmm. I want to say today, God is able to set up influential men in, 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 in high positions yes. so that they are able to defend his truth mm. yeah. when the other ones in low positions can't. Mm. They are yeah. almost compelled to do otherwise. Mm. But yeah. God can also raise yeah. a group of influential men at influential positions yeah. Yeah. to make sure that his word is not made extinct. I think that also reminds me about the story of the, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Mm. Yes. Remember shortly after he was crucified on the Roman cross, his body was the property of the state, oh, mm -hmm. but it took influential characters yeah. 
Who, who's this gentleman? Joseph. Joseph. Yes, Joseph of, of Arimathea. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Joseph of Arimathea was yeah. also a Pharisee who went to ask for the body of Jesus mm -hmm. from the state and he took that body and buried it in his own grave. Mm -hmm. And that's from whence Jesus arose. And that's mm -hmm. where we see the power of influence mm -hmm. at high places because the disciples did not have the power to beg for the body of Jesus mm -hmm. from the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God has never stepped out of the whole scenario that has mm -hmm. been, you know, he orchestrates events. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about this God. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that things are getting out of hands mm -hmm. things things are still in control yeah you know we in revelation chapter 17 mm -hmm. it's spoken about the, the harlot's woman you know mm -hmm. there's a symbol of the very and the papacy and stuff mm -hmm. you know the papacy in his mission even toward the end of the world he's going to use the kings of the earth to try and yeah. you know achieve his agenda as mm -hmm. always we are reading from, you know from the history here mm -hmm. But we are told that the same kings that have been in the same table with hey. the papacy, mm -hmm. doing, you know, carrying the mission of the papacy, all of a sudden God is going to enter into their minds. Mm. So no one is too far from being influenced by God to do what God wants them to do yeah. for, the, uh, for the benefit of his own people. I just want to read that verse. Uh, there's just two verses quickly. Yeah. Revelation chapter 17, verse 16 to 17. It says, And the ten horns which thou sowest upon the beast, these shall hate the woman and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So God is actually in charge. Mm -hmm. You see, so even when, as we are sitting right now, the coronavirus could have gone viral. I mean, mm -hmm. things would have fallen based upon the agenda, agenda that is actually behind. Mm -hmm. But we are told that a God in their meetings, as they are meeting, whether it's night or during the day, the angels of God are actually controlling the minds of these, those individuals so that mm -hmm. they mustn't go too far, mm -hmm. you know, from what God want, you know, will allow them to go. Yeah. So the influence of God is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a pagan or you're a Christian, mm -hmm. God is still have the influence upon yeah. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and all these things work together for good yeah. for those who love the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to put this to the families. Mm -hmm. As in our families, if I take Christ in my life, I've made an eternal covenant mm -hmm. of which all of them must follow mm -hmm. all of them must know the truth from me mm -hmm. and god is as we have said is working to everyone and the point of angels this is one of the things that uh, we are dealing with supernatural powers mm -hmm. that's why we uh, uh, when we were sharing about ephesians chapter 6 yep. about how we can the, the god of uh, the, the god of armor the, the the things that we need to know mm -hmm. the things that god wants us to to understand so yes. we're in the uh, spiritual warfare and a lot of things come for everyone to understand the ways of god mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. i want us to go back in time and we look at a little bit uh, look a little bit into the story of esther oh, yeah. All right. a, a jewish maiden yeah. 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 You know, yeah. you know, one time Trevor Noah said, You yeah. should know you're beautiful when you win somebody else's contest. Uh, wow. He says that when wow. Miss India has become Miss United States. Oh, yeah. Now, now oh. Esther <laughs> must have been an extraordinary, <laughs> beautiful lady. <laughs> she, she, she comes as a slave and yeah. she wins the contest mm. and she becomes the queen. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now, Powerful. God sets her up in an influential position, position. Mm. to preserve the life of the Jews. Hey. Because whoever had uh, coerced the king yeah. to send a decree against the Jews wanted them to be extinct. I've normally said mm -hmm. sometimes human beings like playing games to an extent oh, that yes. they think they have the ability to destroy that which they didn't mm. make. Yeah. Mm. How do you finish mm. that which you didn't make? Yeah. Hey. Now, it was happening then, the devil comes up with a strategy to say, there is a certain group of people that I want to get rid of. Mm. If you look at the way things are happening in our current life, mm. there's still that that spirit yeah. of wanting to destroy a certain ethnic group, yeah. Yeah. whether it's it's the Hindus and Tutsis mm. fight, fighting against themselves yeah. or is the whites trying to get rid of, of blacks. blacks. But yeah. the bottom line, the devil is creating a struggle so that we kill each other and finish each other. Mm. Uh, just because we are going to the end, let's try and tie up one aspect that I think is also important. Uh, much as countries like France and Holland, 
had not accepted the reformation mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of blood had been spilled there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But look, let's look at the countries in the north, north countries like Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. There the gospel is welcomed with peace. Oh, yeah. And let's check the reason why. Mm. Because students, we had been in Wittenberg, mm. where Luther was, mm. are now going back home. And mm. they go home with good tidings mm. of the gospel. Yeah. Mm. And it is welcomed peacefully. Mm -hmm. That speaks to all of us, our children. Now, if this speaks to Christian schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have Christian schools that are able to carry on what has been done in our homes that are supposed to be like heaven? Yeah. What we have taught our children in our homes, is it carried on in their schools? Mm -hmm. Or when they get to school, they learn something else? Yes. It's another different system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is very important, you know, when Martin Luther speaks about the mm -hmm. value of education and what mm -hmm. we can do to someone, we will have to take his word for. Mm -hmm. You see, if your child is not exposed to a good environment where the Bible is actually the foundation of that mm -hmm. school, she, Martin Luther says that that university is a gate to hell. Mm -hmm. So... Any, any education, when God is absent, it won't work, in a, it won't advantage, give you an advantage mm. to be able to make it through. And, and, and as we can see from, uh, from Sweden, I mean, uh, the, the, those, those individuals were coming from the, from the school because they, they, come in, they came in contact with the truth, mm. which was the present truth of that time. When they went back home, guess what? They were able to carry it out and begin the work. Mm -hmm. So God expects that, have you ever wondered why Seventh-day Adventist Church have, have a school? Hmm. What was the purpose of our educational education reform? It was all about people coming in contact with us so that they may learn the value of the truth of the gospel. And as they leave the, our, our schools, colleges, uh, seminary, they have to go back to their areas and begin to preach the gospel of Christ. Mm. Because God knew that the church of God in the last days, as we are carrying on the work of reformation, mm -hmm. with the Martin Luther's education was, was part of their work. They have to establish school. Otherwise, they knew that if we are to leave our children in the hands of the papacy, mm. these people are going to be corrupted. The Catholic Church believes that if you can give me a child for seven years, I'll give you a Catholic forever. Mm. Mm. Through the education. So that's how powerful education is. Mm. There's a character that is introduced, like right, talking about children and mm -hmm. also the schools of Wittenberg. And this character's name is Tausen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Tausen, the reformer of Denmark, was a peasant's mm -hmm. son. And he says, the boy Eli gave evidence of vigorous intellect and he thirsted for an education, but this was denied him because of the circumstances of his parents. But just to cut it short, Tausen got something like a scholarship mm -hmm. and he was trained in Romish schools. Mm -hmm. But interesting enough, because of his fidelity to the truth and his purity of life and character, mm. Tausen began to move from Romish scholarship to the religion of Ruther. And mm -hmm. that is when they turned against Tausen. And Tausen was a great power mm. in Denmark for yeah. the gospel. Mm. Yeah, also on what my brother has just said, in the issue of Tausen, remember, as he had previously said, that he came from an impoverished background. So he got a sponsor where he was going to be sponsored for his education since he, he's got the intellectual ability. Yes, so, but there was a condition that he should never go to Wittenberg. Mm. Yeah. And then we know the reason why. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that was the nucleus of Lutherism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they didn't want him to be going there. Reformed they they wanted to sponsor him so that he would defend what? The Roman, Roman system. system. Mm. Yeah. But that young man, he defied all odds. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the, I love the part where it says uh, he, he, he pretended as if he changed from mm. Cologne because he, he enrolled at Cologne. And then eventually... He went to, to Wittenberg. Wittenberg. Then, but he never told people what he has done. And uh, he went to, to, to back to his hometown mm. and back to the cloister system. Yes. And pretended that everything was still the same. Yeah. And yet the teachings of Luther mm. and also the Bible oh, were yes. doing <laughs> tremendous things yeah. in, in his life. Yeah. Yes. So, and yeah. Even, even in Sweden, as yes. we are reading here, it says... In Sweden also, young men who had drunk from mm. the well of Wittenberg mm. yeah, mm -hmm. carried the water of life to mm. their countrymen. Mm. Hmm. Two of the leaders in Swedish Reformation, Olaf and Roshans Petri, mm -hmm. the sons of a blacksmith of mm. Orebro, studied under Luda and Malenstone, and the truths which they thus learned, they were diligent to teach. <laughs> this is one of the things that will happen to us. Yeah. That as we are reading the word of God, yeah. 
we definitely have to go and teach the people mm -hmm. the truth about everything that is in the Bible that God mm -hmm. has, he has sent us to do. Because, oh, okay. you know, when you, you read it, Christ is saying in John chapter 7, verse 16, he says, my doctrine is not mine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but he is that sent me. Mm -hmm. That's God. Mm -hmm. So the doctrine, because this is what the devil will always fight us okay. mm -hmm. through the doctrine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Closing remarks. Mm -hmm. Ten seconds. I, I just want to say that the Bible was designed to expel all the superstitions and error of mm. men. Expose mm. yourself to the Bible, you'll see what God will do. Amen. Mm. Amen. And exposing yourself to the Bible also has healing properties to the character. Exactly. Because when we read the Bible, it should not be an intellectual undertaking, mm -hmm. but it should be a transformative experience. Mm -hmm. You expose every element and dynamic of your life and allow the Bible to purify you. Mm -hmm. The verse says, your word is a light. A light is in a, my path. And yeah, a and a lamp on my feet. feet. There yes. you are. Yes. So today, we have been given a light to our path, mm -hmm. yeah. a lamp to our feet. Amen. Whoever chooses to stay in darkness, it's yeah. not because the truth has not been said, mm -hmm. but it is because we have deliberately chosen yeah. to go astray and every truth that we have found mm -hmm. shall stand as testimony against us in the mm -hmm. judgment day. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much our viewers for Amen. joining us. May the Lord richly bless you, keep you, protect you till we meet again. Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Brother Mioli will pray for us. Okay, let's close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we would like to thank you so much for what you have done for us today. Mm -hmm. Lord, as this series, Father God, is going to be expounded all over the world. Father God, let it make a change in people's lives. Amen. So that, Father God, we also learn from the errors of the past so that we do not go astray. Because everything, you have done it for us. The provision, you have put it in place. It's only for us to reconnect once again with you. Yeah, for you say to us, Father God, that we must come unto you, Father God, as we are. We do not need, Father God, anyone to intercede on our basis mm. except you, Father God, because you are our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.